Hmm. No audience. All right. Um, should we get started? It's nine oh three. Hi everyone. Um, Tammy, thanks Good morning. for taking. Uh, good morning. Thanks for taking over since Eugene had to recuse himself. So um, it's Monday, June 17th, building and facilities meeting. I believe, yeah, we are recording. So let me uh, just to make sure that you can be heard. I'll just call your names. And if you can just um, let me know that to say yes or whatever. Um, Tammy? Yes. George. Yes. Um, Sharon and here. And I'm here as well. The first order of business is um approving our minutes from last month. Anyone wanna move well, to I was not here, so it's kind of hard. Um I did not attend this meeting. So All according right. according to your uh your colleague uh Chris Hoffman, uh I who I swear is a Roberts Rules of Order expert, what he says is um uh, even if you weren't at a meeting, if you genuinely feel that the meeting minutes were done in you know, in a what am I what what are my words that I should use? If you have it in in good in good faith, if you believe that they were done in good faith, then you can approve them. Okay, so I will move to approve. Second. Um, any changes, comments about the um, meeting? I just want to make a comment that okay. my minutes will be a fraction of these. There's no way <laughs> I don't have a laptop. That's not my. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate Eugene's enormous effort. Mine will not look like that. That uh, is okay by us. And we will okay. be recording them. So if anyone feels like they've missed out, they can watch. Um, okay, so move to approve. Uh, George? Uh, yes. Tammy? Yes. And I approve, yes. Um, so moving on, our next uh, item on our agenda is public comment. I see that we have three attendees. If anyone would like to make any comment, please raise your hand and we'll let you into the room. Oh, nobody. Okay, um, so let's move on to item number four, which is monthly buildings and grounds report. Uh, George? Uh, sure. Uh, just a few things to make mention of. We've changed over to air conditioning in the building. Um, as usual, there were a few things that needed attention, but it was nothing major at this point. So uh, right now, everything is functioning as good as it did last summer. Knock on wood. Um, what else? Uh, coming up. This Sunday, we're actually going to be closing the building on Monday the 24th, because on Sunday the 23rd, we are having carpet cleaners come in and clean the public spaces. It hasn't been done in a while. Um, so we're going to close the building on Monday so that there's enough ample time for drying uh, and putting the spaces back together. So I think that is all I have at the moment. Are they cleaning them on Sunday and they dry yeah. on Monday? Cleaning on Sunday, drying on Monday. Oh, George, uh, there was one other they... thing. Go ahead Sorry. if it's okay. I just carpet. had a question about like, what do you do? Do you move the shelving and all the furniture? The shelving, or... the shelving stays in place. Uh, we move a lot of, we move all the smaller furniture, bigger things like tables, they get set on little plastic tabs and they get slid mm -hmm. around but uh we we pick up all the small things like the chairs and uh other things like that and get the wires off the ground and stuff like that it takes a bit of prep uh but i'll have staff here on sunday to be doing all of that while they're working um and then it's just monday once it's dry putting it all back together and is it professional cleaners or yeah yeah okay. it's a professional cleaner 
Um, there was a company that we had used for years, but they uh, unfortunately did not survive the pandemic. So it's mm-hmm. we're going with a different company this year, but they're mm-hmm. they're still local. Thank you. I'm sure it's a it's a lot of work. A lot of work. <laughs> it's a full uh, day. What the yeah. other thing that maybe you want to talk about, George, was uh, you're trying to find a new plumber. You're oh for yeah, some plumbing repairs. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, typically we uh, we've used a local company uh, pretty regularly in the past, but uh, I think it's a combination of just too much work out there and not enough time to really schedule anybody. So. Uh, I actually had a conversation with Jeremiah at Town Hall to see if he uses anybody else locally. Uh, and he gave me the name of a company out of Belgertown. Uh, and I'm awaiting for a quote for some repairs that we want to have done. Uh, includes like replacing the toilet in the handicapped public bathroom in the women's room. Uh, and there's a couple of staff bathroom issues that need to be addressed. Uh, we've been functioning with one staff bathroom for a while because there's been a slight leak. Um, mm. But it's just, it's been very tough scheduling somebody to do it. The, all the contractors, everybody's just really busy this summer. And it's, try, our, our regular go-to has just been way too busy. And we've had to move on to somebody else just because we really can't keep waiting on this stuff. Wow. Do you, do you use Whittier or no? Um, they used to be in Amherst and I think they moved to New Salem or whatever. I mean, they all, they used to come to our house all the time. So I had yeah, to... yeah. We've had a few that said we're too far away. Like, like oh. I, I contacted several and uh, a plumber that's worked on my own house and it's it just Amherst is too far away for some people, but um, we, you know, we typically use Pickering here in town, but they're, they're just really, really busy and just not enough staff. Okay. And any leaks? With any of the rains recently or um, not? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. The, the usual. Uh, nothing really new has popped up. The CERC staff, unfortunately, are pretty adept at knowing where it's going to leak and having buckets ready and things like that. But nothing new has popped up as of yet. But we've got some good storms coming later this week, so we'll see. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, welcome. anything else? You No. No, Thank okay. You. All right, uh, so let's go to backup building project planning. So while we're waiting on the architects and we're, you know, we have to sign the contract with them and there's a town council discussion today. Um, I know we've been tasked with the backup building plan. So I know Sharon that there's a proposal here, which plan B that you and George put together and sent to uh, Paul, correct? So should we just go over this? I mean, it's like sure. what, six, like a six year timeline for the basics? Uh, Five year timeline? I think it goes, uh, so start, it would be starting this fall going through FY32. Um, um, and the way it, so what I, what I've given you all is, is in memo form, but I've, I've also started preparing it you know, for the JC, for JCPC um, in their five-year capital plan um, uh, format that they like in Excel. And so over FY25 and FY26, um, so it would start with the 1.8 million that the trustees would be paying for. And that would be for starting off with a feasibility study for the HVAC replacement. And then just uh, getting three quotes for a, a new fire alert system and the replacement of the sprinklers and actually doing that work and then uh, abating the children's room. That's really important. So those are the first three that we're recommending for FY25. Um, and again, how much of that we can do depends on whatever costs 1.8, the, the minute it goes beyond the 1.8 million, that's when we need the town money. So we have to start into the JCPC process. So, um, and- Sharon, could I ask yeah, one question? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, when Lynn Grissomer was talking about, um, in, in a, the meeting, a, a meeting I, I listened in on, she said, you know, to be opening the walls for this or that, or, you know, and I'm wondering, you know, we've got two years of asbestos abatement. Does it really make sense to split that up? 
So, so like I said during the trustee meeting, I, I just don't know. And, and this is what I need yeah. help guidance from for with Paul and, and Paul's just super straight out busy. Um, I don't think this is going to be decided anytime soon. Uh, it would be more likely in the fall. Um, if this is the path we, we take, then, you know, we'll okay. sit down with uh, really JCPC. They'll, uh, they'll decide um, just based on, you know, what, the conversations and and yeah conversations that have happened over the past 12 plus years um it, it would be lovely if we could do all the abatement at once but the whole point of of mm. not doing it all at once is because the town can't afford to do it all at once because it eventually would start kicking in ADA and then before you know it you're above the 15.8 million so that just doesn't it doesn't yeah. math. So uh, so that's okay. why I'm assuming this is the more likely. But you, you have sent this to him, but you haven't really talked uh, with him I'm, about it. I'm trying to get a meeting with him about this in particular. No, we haven't spoken about this. And and like I said, I don't think he's going to he won't. I, I, I don't think he's going to have a direction. He's going to want to see what JCPC has to say at, you know, at that time. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Farah. Uh, Sharon, uh, I, I'm sorry we keep interrupting you, but just to, um, I just, just in terms of procedure, so this has been sent to Paul, but in terms of, so now we have till, till the fall, until the bids, but mean in, in the me, in that time, are we going to try, are we going to try to do a feasibility study or would that be, once we know for sure whether the project is going through or not. Also, do we hire an OPM? Like what, just in terms oh, of procedure, how yeah. we, yeah. So what, what George and I would work on this summer into the fall leading up for the bid is uh, putting together an RFP for the feasibility study. We, we don't recommend spending any money on, right. on this. Um, and so, yeah, we put the together the RFP for that and and the the requirements for the fire alert system and the abatement. So we'd have the paperwork ready, I guess, is what I'm saying. And George can talk more to this. Um, and then in theory, you know, on the following day, if the building project doesn't move forward, then we'd be ready to move forward with this with the paperwork. George, you can. And uh yeah, everything, everything, really, everything Sharon said. It's you know we're we're uh, we're trying not to get too far ahead of ourselves, and we don't really want to start spending money on this until we know. Either way, but if we can be as prepared as possible, like Sharon said, having the RFP ready um, uh, for for a design study, and we wouldn't have to hire an OPM until like the actual project goes forward. You know, we can we can we can go out for a design study and hire an architect to do, you know, to do designs, but we wouldn't have to hire an OPM as of yet. What I understand from Rob Mora is that it, once, once the work costs 1.5 million or more, that's when an OPM kicks in. So that would be, so you would, you would work on an R RFP and if the, if, the project doesn't go through, then the next day that would go through. And then we would try to, we would try to get an architect. And how long would that process take? Do you think? Hmm. Two months, six months. Don't know. Okay. So then in that yeah. time, JCPC starts up again in February, right? February to April is the thing. I so thought that time, JCPC was more in the fall now. They're in the fall, aren't they? Am I am I screwing that yeah, up? I, think, I could be wrong. I think we need to it's, get proposals in by the fall, and then they spend they like the spring doing discussing. the discussions and discussion. Okay, so you would put in the first three bullet points that's on the on the plan b list and yeah. those three would be the things to go to jcpc in the fall 
Well, if if yeah. anything, so that would be alerting them to it. Again, the price is going to matter yeah. because uh, the first one point eight is up to the trustees. So we 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 will be on our own for the first one point eight. Um, right. So it, it, we're going to have to we're kind of going to have to go with the flow a little bit. Right. And no matter what, we know that from the, the study back in the 2017 numbers, was that 2015, well, 2017? And then updated in 2020. Yeah. yeah so ADA that was stuff. like 17, 18 million. Was that what it was? So no, if we're looking at inflation and looking down the road over at least over 20, which the town would have to pay except for 1.8 million. Right. And those figures don't include any design or architectural fees, and they also don't include any asbestos moving. payment. Right. Moving expenses or and moving that might expenses, be yeah. off site location, all of that. Yeah. And that might involve moving more than once. It could very well. And all yeah. yeah. And all that would be on the town except for the one point eight million. Yep. All right. Sorry to keep interrupting you with all these questions, right. but I just, you know, I need to wrap the info around my head. Um, yeah. Okay. So we were at F FY25. So then, so that would be the first thing going to JCPC in the fall, should the project fall through. And, right. and then the following year, the feasibility study would be for the atrium replacement and the roof replacement and the rest of the abatement. Um, and then the actual HVAC replacement work um and again it's hard to um yeah so <laughs> this this memo that we've put together this chart that we've put together it's our best guess for now and today but once actual architects start getting in once the town decides how they want to which direction they want to go whether they want to open up whether they want to take the next 10 years versus do they just want to do it in one fell swoop again which right. i don't think they'll choose to do because it won't be affordable um you know architects are going to get in there and they're going to say well it doesn't make sense to do this work yet until you do this work or vice versa so right okay so that just take and that's looking at 25 26 and then 27 JC, but these are not actual years where the work would start. No, so. I, th I think, I think it could be maybe, uh, okay. again, best guess, best guess, uh, we could actually hire. So for FY25, we could hire an architect to do the feasibility study in mm -hmm. FY25, and we could replace the sprinkler, uh, system, the fire alert system and do the abatement in the children's room. So yeah, that's what George okay. and I are proposing for FY25. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's all very ambitious, but we've got a lot of stuff to get through and, mm -hmm. and trying to do it in as timely a manner as possible. Right. And then also in terms of moving more than once, it would mean packing up the whole library more than once, or would it mean packing up parts of the library? Like the child FY25 children's room. Would that mean just packing up the children's room once or children's room and surrounding areas? And uh, how does really, it work? Do we George know? can do a better job of talking about this, but it, it like it really depends on what the work is and how long the work is gonna take. Um so children's room abatement, I don't think we would need yeah. to pack anything up. Yeah, oh. I mean if 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 we look at if we start separating out things individually yeah the children's room uh the actual work could take a month or less and maybe the rest of the library would not be affected uh, you not know, to it, say it, that it, the staff would stay there what we're saying is the no. building would close to the public right and, right and but the we rest would, of the building wouldn't they, have to they be can out. they can put up um Plastic bar big barriers or right. the zipper that they can go in and out. I mean, we have that in our house. Right. Um, so there, there are means, but you, I mean, people might have access, but you wouldn't be working in that area. No, right. absolutely not. And the library would not be open. Right. Yeah, I would not, I would not feel comfortable, you know, having the library open while that kind of work was going on. 
Um, right. And then you look at look at the fire alert system. You know, there's probably a lot of work that could happen that wouldn't affect public spaces or staff spaces. Uh, but there may be parts of it where the building does have to be closed. And maybe that's a case of just adding on hours at the branches to make up for the loss. Uh, right. When you get into stuff like the bigger stuff, like the atrium and things like that, obviously we would have to relocate somewhere because that's a much bigger project that affects a bigger part of the public spaces of the building. Right. I think it's going to be really hard to to answer specific questions about what each stage yeah. is going to mean. Um, yeah. Because we, I think once we hire an architect and get a feasibility study for some of this, then we'll have a better idea mm -hmm. for that part of the project. Then we have another architect in FY28. So I right. think it's hard to know how, how long we'll be closed, when we'll be closed, the duration of different kinds of work. So yeah. Um, so when we're talking about FY28 uh, ADA accessibility, um, that would be the elevator in the front, right? And entrance to the library? Entrance just the library, those? you know, move, yeah. moving stacks, bathrooms. Um, yeah, there, there, was a, there was a bit of a laundry list of things that uh, Keen Riddle had come up with. Um, the biggies are the elevator, the front entrance, uh, but there's also, you know, shifting stacks, like Sharon said, uh, there's some staff areas that are not accessible that attempts would be made to make them accessible and that'll require a bit of uh, reorganization plus some construction work. Um, right. A lot of the historic doors don't meet code. Correct. Um, so bathrooms. Yeah. There's a handful yeah. of original bathrooms still in the building. None of them are up to code. Yeah. Um, right. You know, it, it, it's it's a lot of things like that. That's going to be a big one. Yeah, that's going to be a big one that we'll probably have to close for. Would we have any access to grants for any of this the accessibility stuff? Was there something I heard that if you went over a certain number, you could, or was I imagining that? Was that a conversation? No. So oh, no. this would all still come out of the same town funds. Yeah. yeah. And we wouldn't be adding any new restrooms. So we can forget about no. the gender inclusive restrooms that the plan would have, the renovation expansion plan would have. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. So that's FY28. And then going down. The road, the later years up to 32 would be more uh, um, exterior work, right? Right. 30. Yeah, so the tree that needs to be taken down, the tree that's growing into the sewer line, that the sewer line's got to be replaced. The whole driveway needs to be replaced. All the landscaping will have to be redone. And then all the brick and the trim work. And those can be separated out over a you know, different years. I just put them in one year, but again, it'll depend on what kind of money JCPC has, you know, during any given fiscal year. Right. And for some of this later stuff, Sharon, would, would you have to close the library or move out? I wouldn't think so. Not for the exterior stuff. Right. I wouldn't think. New carpeting. I mean, as you get yeah, you know, way uh, out. Yeah. When yeah. you get that, when you get, out, yeah. out to like carpeting and repainting, you know, we would certainly have to close, but that would not be a long-term closure. Right. You know, and, and again, I mean, we're, we're projecting out 10 years, priorities could shift at any point yeah. during that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if something becomes more of an important thing to tackle earlier, that that whole list could end up shuffling. Right now we prioritized as we feel it needs to be prioritized today. Yeah, that this is your best the, assessment. Right, that's our best right. assessment as non-architects. We This could change down the line. Right. Um, so 
but this would not give us anything in terms of steam space, basement no. safety. Like, what would no. we do? Could we just put new carpeting in that dismal cor corner of the of the basement for teens, where they no. do not hang out? No. No, something's got to happen there. That that space probably needs to be walled off, turned into an office or something. Um, yeah. yeah, I I do not have the answer on that one. Yeah, okay. it's just not it's not practical usable space and there's no supervision yeah, in that right. building or the other yeah. library. <clears throat> so we would not be doing anything for our teens or improving the lives of the children and the children's room besides the abatement. Okay. So no, all... we're not talking about any quality of life. No. You know, improvements. These are just health and safety. Yeah. Right. No no programming improvements. No. And we'd have to continue with programming through all of this, even if you're in the library. And if they're working on the roof and <laughs> people are in the library, you just you just That's have funny. a headache all day long and there's <laughs> banging going on and you finally get used to it, right? Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, this is why, right? This is why the trustees are are moving forward with the building project because yeah. this is such a a dismal um possibility yeah. yeah and so it just it just seems kind of you know as a trust you know if i put my buildings and facilities hat on and not as a it's just or as a member of the community it just to me it's sort of a no brainer and i know there's a lot of risks and we're just i guess we can just I'm just trying to stay positive that we go when we go out in the fall that the bids will come back and at least once we sign this updated MOA with the town then it, the campaign can go back and get back in full swing right because they've had to like stop start stop start I can't even imagine how frustrating it is yeah. or for all of you like how the staff doing Sharon Oh it's okay. rough and it's, it's really rough, rough. it's yeah. yeah yeah really rough um and the you know it's easy for people to say oh well you can just apply for grants for all of these things well right. the problem is is that the, the building project doesn't move forward i lose an entire team of grant writers right. um and it's it's left to me and george mm -hmm. um we, we are yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have enough work going on without adding grant writing to your um adding that to your to-do list, right? Well, I think that if the project doesn't go forward and you lose a huge uh, number of grants, that it's not going to bode well for the town or any department of the town in getting more grants. No. no. And like no. the MBLC said at that meeting, right? They were saying that this is a this is a library for the commonwealth and they like they really stress the democratic process like you know they set a cup and we i don't know if you were there tammy but you know we they said that at the meeting I was there and, in person yeah no i know you and i were but i was talking to one of the commissioners afterwards just thanking them for for what you know their work and they were saying like this is really mind-boggling to us that that you know your town went through this three times and yet there are all these roadblocks and your community should be coming together and working toward this. So so let's just hope that that can happen sometime down the road. <laughs> um, so I don't, is there anything else, Sharon or George, that you wanted to add? Tammy, is there anything you? Nope. No. No. Um, I just... I just think it is very hard to try to um, plan and estimate what repairs should be done when and right. knowing that things may change. I mean, um, I'm happy to hear the AC is working with only minor adjustments, but, um, you know, we just don't know what will happen with the building over this proposed uh, 10 years, eight years. Oh. But thank yeah. you for putting it together. It certainly gives us an idea of, of uh, the challenges should right. um, the uh, unimaginable happen. 
Mm. Let's think positively mm. <laughs> if we can. Mm. So in terms of, so we're just in waiting mode right now, right? You have yeah. nothing out to Paul. Paul has to get back to you. Um, nothing will happen until he does that or until we. It'll be the fall. The yeah. Bits. yeah, the fall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we don't have any other topics. I'm wondering, we do still have four attendees. Uh, if anyone would like to make public comment, we still have a few, we still have some time. Nobody, no hands. Okay. Oh, I see one hand up. Arlie. Uh, Please unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi. You know, I'm listening to you and I understand your your difficulties and everything. Um, I would say about the grant writing, you know, there are many people in the community who I'm sure would help. Um, to apply for grants. There's a lot of expertise in the community around all of this. And I wish you would feel comfortable and willing to open to the other perspectives and not feel they're so dismal. Because I, I do think there's a lot of knowledge and know-how about these things. So I would encourage you to think more positively about plan B as well, because it is a real um, possibility at this point. You know, you're right. This gamble you're taking is a, is a gamble. It is a risk. And I'm glad you're working on plan B, but maybe a little bit more enthusiasm for it because it is a real possibility. I was very happy to hear about walling off that spot and turning it into an office. You know, I think that's a great idea. Um, I was thinking about that myself when I've been hearing about the teen space. And if the project doesn't go through and you only have this footprint, I really hope you can find a, a different space for the teens. I read in that POP report, you know, that the certain offices maybe could be turned into cafes and things like that or something. Please excuse me, I didn't read very, very carefully, but maybe that could be a teen space or, or something. It sounded like a much more pleasant area. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other hands up. So I guess we are adjourning. Thank you all. Thank you, George, for your report. And thanks, Tammy, for doing the minutes. And thank you, Sharon, as always. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.